Hey everybody, this is Mark Marcus with Jack Snap, Jacksonville, Florida, 421 West Church Street. I'm here with Dave Tomasani, and he is with Packet Fabric. Packet Fabric is actually one of the carriers in our data center that's actually doing something very unique. And it's something that I'm starting to, I, I, I wanted to emphasize and, and, and give an opportunity to, for them to present to kind of really show their product because they're running a SDN software based defined network that's actually pretty incredible because of the provisioning time, the speed and just the accessibility to different parts of other data centers and other cloud providers. Dave, you can go ahead and take over now and go ahead and give me your presentation on what we we're talking about and uh, let's get started. Yeah, th thank you, Mark. So what we've built is a software defined network um, to about 160 different data centers in North America. Uh, we've also expanded our presence to Sydney and also uh, London recently. And we plan on having Paris, Frankfurt, and Amsterdam up and running and functional at the end of this quarter. So with our platform, it enables uh, customers to do both uh, data center to data center, connectivity on demand, like you had mentioned, as well as access to different uh, CSPs. Some of them include AWS, Google, Azure, Oracle, and IBM. So what I want to do first is show you how easy it would be to implement a point-to-point -point circuit, say from Jacksonville in the Jacksonville NAP, where you're located. We actually just built out to another location in Jacksonville, which is the CX, CSX location. And we're going to select 421 Church. And with this, you'll see the availability at any, any given moment across our platform. You'll see 1, 10, 40, and 100 gig. Now, this is real time and live on our, on our network. So what we're going to do is request a 10 gig. We also have availability zone A and availability zone B, which allows you diversity within the data center itself from an equipment perspective. We're going to select availability zone A, and then we, from here, we have to select a, a destination from Jacksonville. Mark, was there one particular market that you might have in mind? Uh, go ahead and send me somewhere to maybe New York. Are you guys located? You guys have a presence in New York? We do. There's, there's actually multiple locations within the New York footprint. Uh, the most common one, uh, there's multiple, but one is 165 Halsey. You could also take it up to 111 8th, uh, 60 Hudson. There's multiple markets there. So for this example, we'll take it to Digital Realty, 111 8th in New York City. Uh, we're going to go out and select a term. The great thing about a software defined network is you could go month to month on your terms. You're no longer uh, strapped in on 12, 24, or 36 months. So for this example, we'll show you on month to month terms. So say if uh, you have a media or entertainment type application, you're going to be able to uh, go out and turn that circuit up for just a few bit, uh, a few months. If needed. So you went after you create this, and I see that you're going ahead and selecting your your zones. Um, as far as the data center on the, the back end, and this is kind of where we play our part. What happens as far as uh, an LOA CFA? Yeah, so Mark, what you see here now, this this uh, circuit's being requested real time uh, on our network. And this will be provisioned within the next 60 to 90 seconds. From there, you're going to be able to go over here and you're going to be able to generate the LOA CFA. Typically, from a tra uh, traditional standpoint, with, uh, legacy carriers, that process would take anywhere from five, 10, sometimes 20 days to get that LOA CFA generated. So what we're doing here is we're returning uh, up the circuit real time. So we're taking that provisioning time that used to take sometimes on circuits 30, 60, or 90 days because mm -hmm. we, we know real time what's available on our network. So this is going to get uh, finished provisioning. Then we're going to go out, we're going to view this circuit, all the pertinent information on the circuit itself. And as you see, it's, it's now functional. This is a 10 gig circuit between Jacksonville, JackSnap, and Digital Realty 111A in New York City. It's showing active up, right? But uh, operationally it's down. Because what we need to do from this point is we need to go out and generate an LOA, and you can customize these as needed on your end. 
Nice. We're going to generate those. And now we're going to bring up the uh, LOA CFAs on, on each end. So now you have this to go out and complete the cross connect. You have it from the digitality side in New York City. And then you also have it on the JackSnap side. You have all the appropriate information uh, assigned to, uh, to the LOA CFA for the cross connect. Now we can also do those on your behalf. Most customers will, will uh, go out and present that to the appropriate DCL and complete it. And then with the circuit itself, we have all the information you need right at your fingertips, such as what is showing the status, the billing starts in 15 days, what has been ordered, showing a month to month term. And operationally, it's showing down, but administratively, it's up. And then we also provide the optical light levels. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so when you're doing that testing, you're going to be able to see real time if the circuit's up and running and if there's any issues. Great. Um, okay, let's. This is this is really neat. This is kind of uh, the latest edge. Um, is what I'm finding right now in the carriers, um, carrier space, and I'm really enjoying the platform here. That's why I want more people to really know about it. Um, for instance, let's talk about uh, moving on to, let's say, if I had servers in the data center, and it, how would I connect to Amazon? Do you guys have any sort of a direct cloud connect that we can start working on? I see that the options are there, but can you give us a run through and give us, um, show us what we can do as far as that? Sure, absolutely, Mark. So there's two uh, uh, solutions when it comes to cloud connectivity. There's first a hosted solution, which we provide to multiple uh, CSPs. These are pre-established connections to, uh, you mentioned AWS, Google, Azure, IBM, Salesforce, and others that want to get uh, cloud connectivity to their platform. With this, this is a, a hosted connection, meaning it's shared across, uh, across our platform, but you can also get speeds from 15 meg all the way up to 10 gig if needed. Oh, wow. We also recently expanded our coverage area uh, with Amazon and Google to add up to about 30 additional locations. And we're also supporting Transit Gateway with Amazon. So let's, let's walk you through an example uh, of how easy it is to get to, to AWS. So we're going to select the AWS OnRamp. As you may be aware, they have multiple locations where they've set up their core infrastructure across North America. For this location, an example, we're going to use uh, US East 1. And then you're going to be able to go out and select the needed amount of capacity to get to AWS. You start at the 50 meg level, and you go all the way up to 10 gig. So for this example, we'll start at 100 meg, and we're going to select the availability zone. And then we're going to select the, the, source, um, the source access port. So we have this access port here at, at JackSnap that's already been established. We're going to use that as the, uh, the source interface. We're going to take that circuit to Amazon all the way up to Northern Virginia. And then we're going to just say uh, a demo here. Now what you're going to need is the Amazon account ID to put that in there to complete the order. So I won't be able to go in and place the order until that information is at your fingertips. But you would simply click on there and then it would send a notification out to Amazon and your order would be placed. So you're telling me that 100 megs to Amazon Cloud Direct Connect, from what I'm seeing on there, is going to only cost me $150 a month? Uh, well, that's also you have an access port on top of it. So we've okay. already, for this demo, I've established an access port that you saw here okay. uh, in Jacksonville, which typically is about $400 on a month. Forward. That's still a great deal. Yes. So it'd be $400 plus the $150, and you're now mm -hmm. connected at 100 meg speed to Amazon. Okay, great, great. Um, Dave, uh, can you get, can you tell me uh, anything else about maybe how, um, so you showed me a point-to-point -point circuit, you showed me a, a connection to the cloud. Do you, you, is there anything else that you guys could, um, you guys may specialize in? Yeah, we do. Um, if you wanted to get to, say, an, uh, an IX across our platform, there's different ones such as Telehouse, DKIX, M6, and we keep adding different IX platforms to get to. Um, also third-party connectivity. So this is very interesting where if you wanted to say out of the uh, Jacksonville area, see who might be available if you wanted to connect to someone in Los Angeles. 
we'll select the Los Angeles Marketplace, third party. And these are all the different third parties that you can connect very easily across our network. Oh, wow. So if you wanted had a location in, let's say you need IP transit out of Los Angeles, you could very easily spin up a port and you would get connected to NTT or anyone else who's listed in that market. And we, this is kind of evolving for us. The customers continue to add their locations within our footprint. And uh, Los Angeles is just one example. If you wanted to go back in by market, you can determine who to uh, connect to very easily. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's quite new from the last time I talked to you. Um, wow, that's, uh, give, me, um, give, give me an example. Do you guys do actual multiple, like let's say MPLS style networks, like where I can do, um, I could hub into you guys one location, maybe I could spur out to another four locations? Yeah, yeah, so by, by we've uh, established these different interfaces, right? So we've gone in here, we create these different services, we create these different interfaces. What you do with those interfaces is totally up to you. So we're gonna we're gonna build virtual circuits, and how we do that is by doing a backbone connection. So if we had 10 gig access ports in these three different locations, for this example, we have a 10 gig access port in Atlanta, we have a 10 gig access port in Denver, and then we have a 10 gig access port in Jacksonville. So we're gonna select the source, and we're gonna use that as Jacksonville as the source. And then the destination we're going to use as, uh, as Denver in this example. Now, remember earlier we spun up a circuit and it was a point-to-point -point circuit. It's a pseudo-wire circuit that's an EPL type uh, topology. This, you have the option of using a usage base or you could do a long haul dedicated. So we're going oh, to, wow. yeah, we're going to determine what the speed would be between those two locations. So if I didn't want to commit to like, let's say a gig, but I wanted to use it as an on, uh, as an as needed basis, I could actually just get build like per the gigabyte. Yeah. And we actually go down to 50 meg. So if oh, wow. you want it for hundred, uh, between those locations, you go in and they have actually other thing to point out, you could have 42, up to 4,200 different virtual circuits. So oh, wow. okay. <laughs> if there's a lot of room to grow, uh, it's definitely uh, there for you. So then you would have the 10 gig access port on each side, which would be uh, roughly month to month is $400. And then if you wanted 400 meg between it, it's 325. We go out, we place the order, and we now have a virtual circuit built between those uh, two locations. And then if you wanted to, you could go back in, you could do the same from uh, Denver to uh, Atlanta and Denver to Jacksonville as well. Great. Well, listen, guys, here, I want to go ahead and cut this video down. If you guys want to know more information from Pack of Packet Fabric, you go to their website, packetfabric.com, or you just Google Packet Fabric as well. And I'll also include it actually in my comment section so you guys can actually link to it. So, um, Dave, is there anything else you want to add before we conclude our uh, discussion here? No, I'm just looking forward to getting together at Metro Connect. And if you are in Metro Connect next week in in Miami, uh, Packet Fabric will be there. We'll have a presence. And also we'll be at uh, Nanog in San Francisco next week as well. Sounds like a plan. Dave, thank you for your time today. And uh, I'll be seeing you next week, okay? All right. Take care, Mark.